and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books welcome to books 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 it's a book haul it is a relatively big book haul books that have been sent to me by the publishers books i've bought books i've bought from an independent bookshop uh, for independent bookshop um cozy reading night that will be going ahead on saturday the 26th of june between the hours of 7 p.m till 10 p.m bst if you'd like to join in um but let's start with the books that I've been sent by the publisher. And first off, which I'm excited about, is Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. Um, so I haven't read any Elizabeth McNeil before. She is the author of The Doll Factory, which was a very popular book, um, which came out a couple of years ago. I've got the proof of that. I still haven't bloody read that, but I've heard really good things. Now, what drew me to this is that my friend and yours, Jen Campbell, she did the sensitivity reading for this. So this is set in 1866 in a coastal village in southern England. Um, it says, Nell picks violets for a living, set apart from her community because of the birthmarks that speckle her skin. Nell's world is her beloved brother and devotion to the sea. So, and then a circus arrives in town and Nell is kidnapped. Um, and yeah, and then she's she's taken into life in the circus, which then tours in London, etc, etc. So yeah. Victorian London sounds great. The end papers, I would like that in a dress if that could be arranged. I don't know if it can be. Uh, this sort of like mint green with stars and moons on it. And yeah, I'm 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 keen to read it. I'm keen to read it. There we go. Uh, next up is, I mean, you'll all be well well aware of this. This is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, um, and this won the Man Booker Prize. Now I have um, listened to copious um, podcast episodes with Douglas Stewart on. Um, uh, and I really have enjoyed listening to him being interviewed and talking about his sort of um, inspiration for this book because this book is um, inspired by his life. So it's a coming of age story um, about a young lad in Scotland called Chucky Bane and his sort of toxic relationship with his mother who has problems with addiction and things like that. As I said, it won the, the Booker Prize this year um, and I was kind enough to be sent a copy but also um, David and I did a buddy read video not so long ago where I read a book and David listened to the audio book of it and we're going to do it with this next time so i said we were trying to find a, another good book to do it with and i think this would be a great one to do it with um this one's going to take slightly longer the font is very small and i think david said the audiobook's about 17 hours long um but it's narrated by douglas stewart himself i believe um so yeah so tune in for that video that video will be coming up at some point then a book that isn't out until the 11th of november 2021 and i think i'll probably read this closer to the time because it's out in november 2021 and it's set in november 2020 so um sarah moss um has written this book that is inspired by what we've all been going through in the past few years a uh, few years <laughs> i mean it's only been 18 months but it feels like a few years um and this is a story of a woman who under lockdown uh, decides to go for a walk um just to get away from her small house and the fact that all of her and her family are living on top of each other and while she goes out um she falls and what became what was just supposed to be like a casual little walk uh, ends up being like a mountain rescue mission um but yeah the, the 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 line at the end which gets me excited says unbearably suspenseful witty and wise the fell are asks probing questions about the place the world has become since March 2020 and the place it was before. Sarah Moss's novel is a story about compassion and kindness and what we must do to survive and it will move you to tears. And actually I've just reminded myself that I, Sarah Moss has been churning them out because she had a book out last year called Summer Water, um, which, uh, yeah, which is set in summer. So I should read that this year as well. Um, so there we go. I will be reading that in November. Uh, and then next up is a cookery book. Hurrah, hurrah, a cookery book. This is The Geometry of Pasta. And it's the A to Z, Z of pasta with 100 authentic recipes. So this is a really beautifully pulled together book. And I'm actually getting more and more into books that don't have photos of, um, of the food in there. And I quite like the sort of illustrations and stuff. Now this is, as it says on the tin, um, the A to Z of pasta. And it works its way through pasta. And it's got sort of different graphics almost rather than drawings of it look at those end papers as well that's that side and then that's this side fun um and yeah and it tells you how to make the pasta that's gnocchi um and it gives you recipes of what to do who doesn't love pasta not i i love pasta um so yeah i think it's really fun and i'll be going through this and picking out the vegetarian recipes and then making oh, already it's just got a gnocchi Garganelli, never heard of that before. Pastas that I've never even heard of before. Lasagna ricchi, 
which I think is lasagna sheets, which are sort of like um, this at the si uh, this at the side. Yeah. God, I could just sit and think about pasta all day, every day. Oh no, I've just ruined me. I've just damaged my fell book. Um, then, uh, next up is Betraying Big Brother, The Feminist Awakening in China by Leita Hong Fincher. This is a non-fiction book um, published by Verso. Verso were kind enough to send me um, a little package of books earlier this year, um, and then they provided me with the catalogue and said, is there anything in there that would interest you? And I thought, yes, this interests me. Um, so this talks about the situation. It says, on the, um, on the eve of International Women's Day in 2015, the Chinese government arrested five feminist actors and jailed them for 37 days, sparking a global campaign to free the feminist five. But the five are the only are only the most visible part of a much larger feminist movement of civil rights, labour activists, performance artists, and uh, online warriors, prompting an unprecedented awakening among China's urban women. So yeah, I feel very looking forward to this, um, and look, can't wait to learn more about that. And lastly from the publishers is Other People's Clothes by Kala Henkel, which isn't out until the 8th of uh, July. Um, so this is quite exciting and I always like getting sent like little bits. So this is written by a, um, an, an American um, author and artist who is based in Berlin. And this book is actually set in Berlin in 2009 and it follows two art students from New York. So very similar um, to the actual author um, themselves. And uh, yeah, their sort of like lives living in Berlin, they rent out this apartment, um, which, um, which used to belong to a crime writer, I think. They spend their nights twisting through Berlin's club scene and their days hung over. Soon inexplicable things start happening in the apartment and the two friends suspect they're being watched by Beatrice. Convinced that their landlord is using their lives as inspiration for her next thriller novel, they decide to beat her at her own game. So it sounds very exciting. I also got sent some pop, uh, um, postcards. Blood, sex, death, Berlin. Every night you miss in Berlin is a night you miss in Berlin. And Beatrice's, and then got some German down here, which says 10 euro cover, three one euro roulette chips and champagne. I could eat some chips now. Should we have some chips now, David? What have you got there? An egg. An egg sandwich. David went out last night to watch the football, but you're not feeling too hung up, hungover, are you? Yeah, I feel right. He feels all right. Uh, next up are the books that I bought when I went to um, Harbour Books in uh, Whitstable, which is um, an independent bookshop close to where I live. Um, as I said, I'm running a cosy reading night on Saturday the 26th of June, um, and that is in collaboration with Independent Bookshop Week. Um, I will link the video down below where I go and buy those books because I go into much more detail there, but I will just show you um, the books that I bought because I'm really pumped for bloody every single one of them. These first two um, I actually bought for David, but I imagine I will get around to reading them. This, the first one is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iyamidi. Then Black Kids, I love this front cover, Black, The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed. She's got burning palm trees in her glasses, it's just amazing. Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This I think I will read on the night, I think. Although I have been tempted because a lot of people have been commenting on that video saying, of the books that they've read have been really, really good. Loads of people, David, have said that The Black Kids is brilliant. Oh yeah? So oh, cool. I don't know if you'll start with that. I didn't know which one you wanted to read out of The Black Kids and Ace of Spades, but maybe you'll go for that. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, then Unwell Women, um, A Journey Through Medicine and Myth in a Man-Made World by Eleanor Cleghorn. This is non-fiction, and I will definitely be picking this up on the night, because I think I'm going to read like one chapter of this, um, maybe like a day until I finished it. Oh, mascara in my eye. Um, and then The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blackmore, which I've been wanting to get my mitts on, and I will probably save for October, for like Halloween month to read some witchy books and then this is the other one that everyone's been saying is really really good this one sky day by leone ross look at the bloody end papers on those absolutely gorgeous and um, so yeah if you want more details of those go, go and head over to that video that i've linked down below and then the last two um this one is the five the untold lives of the women killed by jack the ripper by hallie rubenhold now i listened to the audiobook of this about three or four years ago it's one of my favorite audiobooks i had a really really good time listening to it and i always maintained that i would like to get my mitts on the book because it has photos toes in it and also because I feel like I'd like to revisit this book um and have a and just just learn a little bit more about it from the, the very same audiobook that I listen to and this is I've got a community library near me which is so adorable um and it's a little um like cupboard um on someone's front garden and I 
donate books there and people donate books there and you can just take what you want and that particular day I took this and I also took a um, a soup cookbook that I had uh, that I have um, and it's out of print now it's a Covent Garden soup for everyday cookbook which I maintain is one of the best soup cookbooks ever and my mum's always wanted a copy I couldn't believe it was there so I've given that to her and then once we finish with these books we will give them back into the community so yeah I'm looking forward to, to revisiting that and then the last book I've got is a book that I really struggled to get hold of um, this is Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vanderer um, and for my book club with my pals we take it um, in turns to pick a book we do it over Facebook chat and we take it in turns to, to pick a book and it was my friend Laurel's turn and she picked this book called Where the Forest Meets the Stars um, and it says here after the loss of her mother and her own battle with breast cancer Joanna Teal returns to her graduate research on nesting birds in rural Illinois I like birds, determined to prove that her recent hardships have not broken her. She throws herself into her work from dusk till dawn until her solitary routine is disrupted by the appearance of a mysteri mysterious child who shows up at her cabin barefoot and covered in bruises. Now, one of the girls has already started this. We don't, we're not even discussing this till the end of um, July. Um, but one of the girls is already starting this and says she gets very big snow child vibes. Now, what I will say is that when it arrived, I was surprised that it looked quite sort of self-published. And as I said, I wasn't able to get it out from... Um, I wasn't able to get it out from a, my local library, on Libby, on, I'm, I'm a member of two libraries. Um, I looked on some independent bookshop websites, didn't have it. Looked on Waterstones, they didn't have it. And turns out it's published by Amazon Publishing. Um, so that's probably why I've been unable to buy it anywhere other than Amazon, which I usually don't do. So that's where that is from. Um, and I'll let you know how I get onto that. I, I don't have good feelings about it. I don't know why. Maybe I'm judging the book by a cover, which you should never do. But those are the books that I got my mitts on in June. Let me know if you've read any of these. Um, as I said, I will link that uh, video down below where I go to the uh, independent bookshop. Harbour Books in Whitstable. Bloody lovely place. It was the first bookshop I'd been in this year. Well, since November, I think. Um, but David and I are actually going um, shopping today. And I'm going to go um, to Waterstones, which is exciting. So, yeah. Let me know you're getting on with your reading. And I will see you all again soon for another Book 2 video. Goodbye.